Hello guys and thank you very much for tuning into this video. This is a tutorial video for the new OBS Studio, specifically how to record 1080p HD with 60 frames per second and particularly with Arc Survival involved in mind. If you want to see an example of what this tutorial will help you achieve, feel free to check out any other of my videos. I'll try and do a little annotation as a link for you guys if you would like to do so. Consider it proof that this tutorial will work. And before I go any further guys, I just want to say that it is really important that you watch all of this tutorial because if you miss any one step, everything can go drastically wrong. So please bear with me. I assure you it's worth it just to get this right, otherwise you may go, go through and not know what is going on. You're going to want to download it. You can find it online if you type OBS Studio in Google. And you'll want this one, this link, which I will include in the down there. And just select the correct operating system under here. Mine is obviously Windows 10 and it's 64 bit. And you hover over here, that is what you'll see OBS 0.14.164 bit. All right, that's that bit out of the way. Download it, install it, open it. And now you'll, you won't have any of this in here, and chances are your microphone may not already default onto here. But what you'll need to do first is to create a new scene. You can, you can right click and press add or you can click one of these. As you would in OBS, you go into add scene and you would pick game capture. Now you can name that whatever you like. For the sake of ease, let's call this arc. Now it comes up with this, again looking very similar to the original OBS. Now one thing I would recommend is unclicking capture any full screen application because this can result in bugs. I have had issues with this already. As an example, I, I was once tabbed out of the game and I right clicked and it then defaulted this to the full screen application. Literally, this, this little menu here became projected onto my recording and it recorded that instead of the game. It sounds ridiculous, it was ridiculous. Thankfully, I noticed that it had gone wrong. So unclick this. In here, if you've got Arc open, Arc will appear under here. If it's not open yet, it will not appear on this list. So open Arc and select it. For this example, I'm not going to do, do a demonstration. I'm, we're going to just go with explorer.exe because it's easier. The rest of these things just don't change or match my settings, okay? Ignore this, ignore this, ignore this. Okay, ignore this. And it, you can limit capture frame rate if you want to. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it because it won't try and capture above this the settings that you've selected Capture cursor is obviously useful in certain games and necessary now This is the important one for arc the anti-cheat compatibility hook It has had and certainly OBS did have has had some lack of compatibility with the battle eye anti-cheat mechanism and I have spoken to, to Bastian Suter about this and he has not been able to provide me with a suitable fix for this. So I've had to found, find workarounds of my own, which do work but aren't ideal. So just make sure you click that as it, sh it does alleviate a few problems along the way. Now, we're going into settings. This is the really important bit. Okay. On a slightly arbitrary note, you can change the colour scheme either to white or to dark. And your language, obviously pick the language you speak as your first language. All of these options are kind of optional. Now this is just to do with when you're editing the scene. Um, so you can like snap things to the edge of the box. It's actually quite a handy little feature. Uh, I quite like having that on, so I've got that on there. Now moving on to stream. Stream type, streaming services, service, you, you get an option of all the different services. I, I use Twitch. My server location, the nearest one to me is London, UK. And then obviously my stream key, which I'm not going to show to you guys. <laughs> um, and then now moving straight on from, from stream, going to output. Now, this won't look this way when you first come in. You'll want to go in the output mode and go into advanced and do click advanced. Otherwise, it won't give you as many options. Now, when you stream, you can only output to one audio track unless you're also recording your stream. So for the sake of this, we'll assume you're not. So you just want one audio track. Encoder should default to X264. Leave it like that. Now I rescale mine. I'm recording at 1080p, but outputting and uploading 1080p into Twitch is an extremely intensive thing for your bandwidth. And my up upload bitrate, as you can see here, is not good enough for HD. 
to be output at that rate. So I allow my CPU to convert the 1080 footage into 1280 by 720, which is what this number here means. Now the bitrate I have, I, I upload at 1.8 megs a second, um, which isn't very fast, but I can, it does just about scrape by with 720p, which is pretty good on Twitch, but only because I'm able to downscale what is otherwise higher quality footage. Because my CPU is quite good, it's able to do that with any, without any frame rate loss. Now, you want to click use custom buffer size, change that to zero, change the keyframe interval to two. Don't ask me why, just do it, it will work. Use CBR, do the same thing. From what I understand, that's const constant buffer rate and those all relate to each other, just, just to do what it says there. Now this one is, is important that, that you don't change this. My CPU is the i7-6700. Now that's 3.4 gigahertz of the newest architecture that you can get on Intel. So for all int intents and purposes, it's basically the second best CPU on the market right now, aside from the i7-6700K. Okay, if you've got that one, then go crazy. If you've got anything above 3.4 gigahertz, I mean, mine overclocks to 3.8 automatically, you know, from the factory. But I would, otherwise, I wouldn't recommend moving this. I think it actually defaults to very fast. So just whatever that's defaulted to, leave it as is. Otherwise, you will experience a great amount of trouble. I can't stress that enough. Profile, none. Tune, none. Again, variable frame rate. Leave that off. Okay, that's just the streaming bit. On to recording. Type, pick standard. Custom output doesn't work yet. Don't use it. Choose where you want it to record to, and you can again. That's an optional extra. But uploading to YouTube, you're going to want to use MP4 as your recording format. <clears throat> if you are willing to use something else, obviously, if you feel comfortable that with that, then do it. But I would just recommend following these settings exactly. Now, this is the number of audio tracks that you want to enable. I don't know why it's not a, a, a you know a click down list one to three because I mean you can exclude three here, but that would output three tracks. It seems a bit strange to me. To have it that way. Keep X264 as your encoder. Do not select this box, otherwise your computer is going to waste time trying to rescale it, the output when it doesn't need to. Now that is separate from the setting that we've used here in the streaming to rescale output. So don't rescale it, okay? I had that on, I'd done it accidentally, and I did not know why it looked crap. It, the, the settings weren't as good as it should be, it took me hours to figure it out. So just take my word for it, that is not good. Unless you want to downscale it, but I can't see why you would. <laughs> can't see why you'd want to do that. <laughs> All right. Now the bitrate. This again, it just depends on on exactly what kind of quality footage you want. I've selected this 8196 and use custom buffer size of zero. Now it doesn't tell you so, but my understanding of it is this: if you select buffer size zero, that actually allows it a buffer size of whatever it feels is necessary at any given time. I've got f file outputs of this as high as around 18,000, that's one eight three zeros um, as, a, as a bit rate there. So that basically, if you have it at zero, it doesn't say so, but it does effectively default it to whatever size it needs to be, which is very useful. So if you're in a game and there's suddenly one period of great graphical intensity on the screen, say like a huge fire and lots of particles flying around, then it's going to give it the option to really kick into top gear at that point. Okay, so just have that as it is. Keyframe interval 2, don't use CBR, keep that at 23, and this here wants to be very fast. See, that's slightly different from here. <clears throat> um, I probably should actually change that back to very fast, so I'm going to do that now and apply. You want the profile as main and the tune as none. Now, audio. You may as well have these at 320 bitrate. It's such a small number in terms of information transfer that you may as well have that little bit extra higher quality audio on there. Unless you know you're capturing on a, a pretty shoddy audio device, give it a chance to, to, to have quite a lot of data in there. Now I've got these two at 320 because I know they're my primary sources of audio. Anything else, I may as well have it a bit lower because it might just be Skype or TeamSpeak and that doesn't necessarily need to be such high quality for me at the moment. Now moving on to audio, you want to, again, the same reason, keep it at 48 kilohertz. If you know you're recording at 44.1, then change it to that. Channel, stereo, everything else, allow it to default. I've got my microphone set to the microphone I want to use, which is this one here. And then I don't have any of this set up, but this is down to personal choice again. You just pick what you want to use. Now moving on to video. 
base canvas resolution that as I say this is a tutorial for 1920 by 1080p if you want to output scale it you can change that but just make sure that if you're doing 1080p that these numbers read that for the longest time I had this set to the wrong setting and it took me a long time to figure out that that was what was going wrong with my videos now I heard on reddit that the downscale filter it was bugging out at the moment now I've only used this when I've been streaming okay so I don't know and it, it, it's worked okay for me I've not had any problems with that um, common FPS values I put 60 because that's the rate at which I would like to record and now that's pretty much it you've just got your hotkeys I use F5, F4 and 5 for stopping and starting recording and your renderer it, you only get these couple of options I just use Directory D11 uh, video adapter I get no options for that color format MV12 601 partial just leave all those as they are this looks a little bit scary but it's not it's just the the name it's giving to your files so it's just year month day hour minute second overwrite if file exists I would suggest that that's an extremely stupid thing to have clicked because it could potentially cause your problems as opposed to just thinking to yourself oh I'd better delete that that file that I don't need anymore stream delay you can enable a stream delay if you want to I've never done that myself so I won't give you any recommendations of it and automatically reconnect I again I, I assume this refers to a stream and I will let you decide what what you would like to have that as you don't have to add an input source for a, for a microphone but you have the option to but there's really no need because this mic auxiliary will stay there and as you can see when I speak the bar moves now what you do need to do is add a noise filter uh, this way by right clicking on it and going on filters adding one in like that and picking between noise gate and gain you can see the settings I've got on mine everything on there desktop audio you're gonna want somewhere six decibels or lower just to make sure that this always has the option to be louder than the desktop audio without any loss of quality in the sound and just before I go I should mention that this will output one video file and that if you drag that into your editing software it should in theory come up with two audio tracks because of the selection that you're making the mixer here you're gonna to want to pick track one and track two but for this so my desktop audio is track one my auxiliary track two if you're not sure what you're doing go through this tutorial mirror everything I've done exactly and it will work you don't necessarily need to understand it now if you output your video file and your editor does not and is not able to find both audio tracks then you can use a piece of software called audacity which is freeware and you can download and I'll put a link in the down there for you to use and that will allow you to load all on any audio tracks within that what I would say is just have a good play around with this software using arc before you start doing your recording just to show, be sure you can iron out any little bugs that you might have and that pretty much pretty much wraps it up guys I am really really more than happy to answer any comments you've got questions anything you want to know feel free if you try this out and it doesn't go right shoot me a question even if it's not 1080p 60 fps just let me know and I will gladly do my best to help in any way I can all I would say in return is that I, ho I hope you'd click the like button and consider subscribing you might see some of my other content and uh, decide you want to subscribe after watching that so that that is it guys I'll stop rambling on hope you've enjoyed the video and best of luck in all your endeavors.